People used to make jokes, my film was dark, and I used to say that's because I grew up in Pittsburgh. It was all coal dust and smoke. I think, if anything, it's, you know, we used to go to movies all the time because they were air conditioned in the summertime, and it was a great way to uh, entertain yourself. My mother used to use the movies as a babysitter, right? Make sure you don't come home for four hours. Give her some peace and quiet. So seeing all those movies certainly influences you. I was very enamored of the westerns of John Ford, George Stevens, and Howard Hawks, mostly American filmmakers, and then later on Truffaut, Godard, uh, Bergman, uh, Fellini, Antonioni, all the uh, European, some of the Russian filmmakers. They have a gifted students program in Pittsburgh, and I went to art school from, for nine years in, in that program, uh, plus a few other years, about 12 or 13 years. But toward the end of my senior year in high school, uh, I was pushed into studying engineering. And um, hated it. You close your eyes, that's how dark those years were. I don't remember a thing about them, except I played a little bit of basketball for school. And uh, I realized that basketball was no answer and engineering was no answer, and I got a job in a small motion picture company. I've always loved films. You know, in those days, everybody loved films. And I just, the natural progression, I became a director. I was working in a film company. I was an editor, developed film, animator, special effects, all this stuff, all these little tiny things, primitive at that time. And uh, I got an um, opportunity to shoot and edit a series of documentaries uh, in public broadcasting. And then eventually I became a director as well. I got frustrated with the style of documentaries because all it's handheld, grab this, grab that. But because of my background in painting, I liked the formality of commercials and the fact that you knew exactly what you were going to do. You could control it, the lighting, everything. And eventually I just started uh, doing commercials. I've been, I've kind of been against the formality of education in, in any creative process for the simple reason that I've said this before, cre creativity is about breaking rules and finding new ways to do things. I think if you go and get a formal education in those processes, sometimes they answer questions that uh, maybe shouldn't be asked. The idea should di dictate the technique. Too many people uh, superimpose their own visual style or technique on an idea that doesn't warrant that. I've always tried to understand the idea that I've been given to find the best way to execute it. I think I prided myself on being able to do is read the original intent of the script before it was chopped up by people that are aggressive. Because by the time a script gets to you, it's probably gone through 15 or 20 hands with probably 50 comments. So in, because of uh, professional courtesy, the creators of the script will change these things to accommodate the clients who are paying for it. But sometimes the things are better off uh, the way they were in the original state. A dream project. Um, that's a tough one. Um, you always have stories you want to tell. The stories I want to tell are kind of obscure, so, and I want to tell them in a, uh, on a big stage, so uh, the money thing always creeps in. But, uh, you know, I'm fascinated with the, uh, the uh, period in Paris after the war in the 20s. I'm fascinated with jazz music. Uh, I was fascinated with Shakespeare, but they screwed up a Shakespeare film now. I'm fascinated with uh, a genre horror film uh, with a little bit of uh, less horror, more uh, uh, other interest in it. Stuff like that. My favorite piece of the work I've done is the Beatles video, Free as a Bird. The whole experience was wonderful because of Neil Aspinall, who was the fifth Beatle who ran the organization. And um, I had full access to the, all the Beatles archives. And uh, we spent about six or seven months developing the idea. And we went back through all the lyrics. We, and we had an open forum about how, how the inspiration for the songs came about. So be, having access to all that, being inside uh, Apple and uh, seeing how things developed, the creative process that they went through, all that stuff, uh, was just a tremendous experience, the whole thing. The song was handed to me. It was uh, extracted from a uh, dictaphone tape that uh, John had made very close to his 
murder. So they digitally extracted his his voice from the material, the, the dictaphone material, and the other Beatles came to re-record over that. So they had a completely new song. It's been criticized for not being a true Beatles song, but on the other hand, all four Beatles participated. So I don't know why they would say it's not a Beatles song. Yeah. about getting this award? Huge. Huge. Uh, huge. It's very touching, actually. Um, the thing's touching about it, and this is personal, I might break down a little bit here. I went to the exact same schools that Andy Warhol went to, and, uh, and of course Andy Warhol was much more successful as a painter than I was. I made the joke that it was because my mother used to serve Heinz soup. If you served Campbell's soup, I might have been more famous as a painter. And I've always had this thought back of what would have happened to me had I been a painter? You know, how, how successful would I have been? Would I have been happy? What all, all that? And when I read the list of people who have uh, received this award, Andy Warhol's one of them. And my daughter, my youngest daughter, who is a terrific painter in her own right and has all the skills that I never had. Uh, was uh, when I told her that Andy Warhol had gotten this award, it was thrilling to her. And Dennis Hopper was a good friend of mine for a long time, and uh, we used to talk long and hard about the art school and Andy Warhol because he was uh, Andy Warhol was one of his heroes. So it's a curious thing that we're connected in this obscure way. But I'm very proud of that. Touched. <laughs>